is Teresa Shankrat. She was the star player of the Mighty Max. I will be asking her a few questions while she was playing on the Mighty Max basketball team. Question number one. What was the thing that made you such an amazing player? I really didn't know about being amazing. I really just wanted to be... Uh, I loved it. I absolutely loved playing basketball. It was nothing better. So I wanted to do it as well as I could do it. And then I met some great friends, and they wanted to play well. So we didn't want to disappoint each other. And I think that friendship and not wanting to disappoint each other made us all better. How was having Kathy Rush as a coach? Oh, it was great. Coach Rush, we didn't call her Coach Rush. We called her Mrs. Rush. We didn't call her. She was only a couple of years older than we were, but she was our coach, and uh, her husband was at the time in the NBA. He was a referee. So she was going to games with him and watching uh, the NBA and things. And she brought some of those things to us on the floor, and it was great. It was How did it feel when you won the championship? Well, that's interesting. Because the truth is, when we won the first championship, no one was there. There were only five young girls from Immaculata who, five students, who pulled their money. They need each need in 25 hours to go out to normal Illinois and they watch us play. There were, there were no parents or anybody because everybody thought we were going to lose. So we really didn't know. We never took the nets down. We had no idea. Um, our tickets, we didn't have tickets to come home because we flew out standby. And when we went to the airport, uh, we had to figure out how to get home. And then there was a gentleman here named was Kaz Holloway. Um, wonderful family, and when Sister Mary Flores called him, he said, fly him home first class. So they flew us home first class, and when we got home, there were 500 people waiting at the airport for us, and it was before 9-11, so the gate was all right there. Was when we came off the plane, there were all these people. It was great. It was fun. Um, were there any difficulties in the way of your team? Difficulties? Well, it's interesting. We didn't have a gym. We had, really, we had sure. basketballs, um, but we had each other. So the material things we didn't have, our uniforms were old and woolen and they weren't very good. But what we had, uh, I guess today people in the call would call those things difficulties, not having a gym to practice in or we practice in the novitiate because the, uh, the gym at school had burned down. Um, girls got really excited when they did a cotillion of decorations and they got, they burned them. But, um, no, we really, we, we didn't live at school so we had to drive back and forth for fine rides and we did that. And no one worked, worked you know, worried about the parents didn't drive us. We took care of it ourselves. So, we were really an independent self made group. Okay, um, what made you want to play basketball? Well, that's an interesting thing. I grew up in a neighborhood, Nick, of all boys. So I had two choices. I could either stay in the house and help my mother clean, like, or I could go outside and learn to do what the boys were doing. She did teach me how to clean, but I did learn how to play with the boys. Okay, um, what is the most fun thing about having your own basketball clinics? The most fun thing? I think the most fun, neat, cool thing is watching people get better. Like for instance, you. You came in, you were pretty good, but now you've really gotten better. You've made an all-star team, you've done different things. I watch you practice, I watch you get excited about things. And that, to me, that's a real kick to watch other people use their talents and really be the best version of themselves. Okay. Um, what was your favorite thing to do when you had practices? What was my favorite thing to do when we had practices? Was I coaching or was I playing? Playing. I really wasn't a great practice player. I was a gamer. I wanted the lights on, the people in the stands. I wanted to put on a show. Um, practice was what was there. We had to do it. Um, you know, I did what I was supposed to do, but I wouldn't call myself a great, great practice player. I was a gamer. Um, what is some advice for basketball lovers out there? Basketball lovers. 
Um, the game is great. And of course, right now, with the men's NCA going on and those games, I'm glued to the TV. And every one of the last four games is down to someone taking a long, deep three. They either get fouled, it goes in, or something to win the game, and the game's going down to the last uh, play. I just think that's, that's exciting. And I, and I think what I would tell people is if you want to play, learn the fundamentals. Learn the fundamentals, learn how to shoot, learn how to do it right, and then go do it. Um, did you have any other hobbies than basketball? Um, when I started out, just basketball. So I could afford it. You know, um, I was the oldest of five children, and my father worked three jobs. We lived in a long home in Glen Olden. And um, basketball was it. And then as I got older, I started to play golf. So I may have even played with you that once or twice. I'm looking forward to playing with him again. <laughs> but he beat me. Um, and uh, I think my two, my two favorite sports, honestly, are basketball and golf. I can't play basketball anymore, but I can teach it. Golf, I can still play today. And I think my other hobby, as you know, would be dogs. I love my dogs. I love my pups. Okay, um, that is it. Thank you so much for coming today. Nicole, thank you, and I hope you do very well in your project. It was a great part.